Hello there. Um, how can we attract new sales opportunities, uh, opportunities to work with new clients, uh, work with uh, more with existing clients? That's the topic of this Rainmaker briefing with me, Mark Stonham. And thinking about this, it's uh, a lot of people see this in the area of broadcast. So they say, oh, we've got to be visible on LinkedIn. We've got to be visible to our base of people through uh, um, through email is another way of doing that. So there are a, a number of different channels where we can um, sow the seeds to attract new opportunities. Um, and I'll talk through in this, um, th this video about some of the messaging that you might put in there, some of the reasons why, and then give you a, a challenge at the end to uh, help you to uncover some of the things that you might put into that. So um, the, the core message here in terms of attracting new opportunities is to focus on what the problems or aspirations of your target audience are. And presuming you know your audience, you've got them defined, you know what um, rational and particularly emotional uh, things are driving them, then you can engage with those. So I, I, I suggest it's a way of um, particularly looking at things in terms of a question, hence asking the, the question to start off here, how can we attract new opportunities to get people's interest to start with, as opposed to starting this to say, here's a way you can attract new opportunities. You may feel that that's not necessarily as, as compelling as the question. Um, going behind there, um, there's, a, there's a couple of aspects there of what drives people, one of which is they're moving away from something which is uncomfortable moving away from pain, moving away from bad news, a bad situation. And you may feel that you've been in a similar sort of situation. There have been changes where you were uncomfortable and you wanted to move away from that. The flip side is people want to move towards something. So they want a brighter future. They want to progress their career. They want to grow their business. And the difference between the two of them is that if there is a pain, people are far more motivated to move away from it now, rather than to move towards again, that may, you know, that they may feel that the change is not worthwhile and actually staying where they are is, is more attractive than, than, than change to an unknown future, as it were. So we need to overcome that, and particularly in your marketplace, if you can identify pain that people will move away from, that's quite compelling. Um, in terms of the business drivers underneath that, there are some for businesses, such as making money, saving money, being compliant with legal requirements and agility or culture or some of those, uh, those factors. Um, on a personal level, uh, some of the drivers there are around you know, making more money, having more freedom, more control, the lifestyle and those sort of aspects that, uh, that are important to, uh, to individuals. In both of, well, and, and particularly looking coming back to the um, attracting new opportunities, this is one way of four that I've identified and I talk about. So although it is visible in the open market because other people are doing a lot of the um, raising the visibility, there are three other ways that can happen behind the scenes, as it were. So this is using the gain analogy. So G is for grow your existing customers. So taking ideas and messages to them through a newsletter, for example, is a good way of creating new opportunities. The A is the attract, which we're covering here. The invite people to connect is where we're targeting people and doing prospecting and outreach to them. And again, the, the messages around the pain and the gain apply in those situations. It's just to deliver on a one-to-one -one basis. And the, the fourth area is networking for referrals. And again, knowing the, uh, the pain and the gain message and educating our network, or particularly those who are going to introduce people to us, is a valuable way of seeding and encouraging those referrals. So there's the pain and the gain aspect, but I think more critically than that as well, or adding to that, 
is this factor of trigger events. So what is happening in somebody's business or in their personal life that triggers them to move away from the status quo? And that is where being really focused on this can make a huge difference. So in, um, in, in people's personal lives, in, in my own career, there's that, uh, the general desire for progression is more of a moving towards, as is to go solo, as is to grow a business. But on a personal level, redundancy is a much more immediate catalyst for making some changes. In a business context, there are the, the general things like the strategy to grow um, and the plan, but there are also events that take place in a business environment that can knock a plan sideways. Uh, losing a key person, for example, could be, uh, could be quite key. And therefore there's an immediate need to respond to um, that pain situation of being a man down or a person down. Um, you're, you're doing your business model, you may align with a number of others. So for example, in the business sense, the, the startup or launch or a new campaign or expansion sort of route, if you're a, say a, a law firm, maybe an accountancy or a marketing agency, the startup market is a good way to engage new clients. It may be that step change of funding for expansion, funding for growth. It may be they take on a new manager in the executive team as a sign of expansion. They've maybe replaced somebody or, or broadened the team, but that new appointment then is a, a trigger for contact. Maybe some legislations uh, happening in the marketplace that we've got uh, maybe two, two, two or three years visibility of, and therefore there's a, a lot of activity around becoming compliant with that. And it may be that there's some competitor action happened in the marketplace. Maybe they've opened a new branch office or uh, bought another firm or uh, launched a new product. So some of that activity to, uh, to respond to. And it creates an opportunity to, to ask a question, whether that's through the broadcast or on a one-to-one. -one. And on a one-to-one, -one, that question might be, I noticed that so-and-so firm has bought another one. How does that affect you in your marketplace? On a broader term, it might be sharing the uh, the press release that the, the company's bought the other one and um, uh, putting maybe a comment onto it that uh, alerts your network that you're in touch with what's happening, but also could be a starting point for conversation. So a number of ways of, of sowing the seeds there and around what to do, um, picking up on some of those uh, pain and gain messages, the trigger points, putting a posing as a question into the marketplace rather than a statement. Um, and then choosing how to execute that through LinkedIn is an obvious place to do that, but it may be you could re uh, reflect that also in a Facebook page if you have it or through Twitter uh, or YouTube if you uh, wanted to record a quick sort of piece to camera. So loads of things around that that um, uh, can be a, a, an opportunity to review and find new opportunities. So I particularly now say, okay, the, the action focus here, I'll give you some homework if you want to pick it up on, pick up on it, is to look at the last five sales opportunities that you won and say, well, okay, at the start of that, what was going through the personal circumstances or the business circumstances of those, of those recent wins? And then also look at five that you started a conversation with, but they didn't progress. Was it that you lost out to somebody else? Um, or was it that no decision was made? I think what, what wasn't happening there? What were the signs that weren't present there? And then that could mean that uh, you feed that into your qualification process. So you need, when you're qualifying an opportunity, you need to understand what the compelling event is or the trigger. And if that's not there, then that may be not quite such a hot opportunity as if there is a time-based um, opportunity. So I tend to ask people at those, those sort of discovery calls, is there anything, you know, any, any deadline when this needs to be completed by? Just to see and test whether there's something there that I need to factor in. And also if there's likely to be something driving them or whether this could well uh, roll through without any particular deadline. So um, some examples there um, and an approach that to, to look at ways to create new opportunities. Um, I hope you found that useful. Drop me any questions if you want to. And um, 
uh, if you want to just to talk this through, I'm quite good at helping people to, to, to identify um, opportunities and, and, and strategies around this. So if you want to book a call with me, go via the URL of markstonham.com. Many thanks for your time and have a fantastic day. Bye for now.